Welcome back to the new yachtsman. Today I've got some great guests. Um, they've got a great background in yachting and they also do um, video walkthroughs of a lot of different boats that I think you'll find interesting. And, um, you know, they kind of got into this like all of us do, kind of jumped in with both feet, learned along the way. And uh, I think we'll learn a lot from them. So, um, Victoria and Rico, why don't you introduce yourselves and uh, let us know how you got started in all this. <laughs> oh, well, hey guys, um, I'm Victoria Chalaya. This is my husband, Rico Stoll. And um, we have two YouTube, YouTube channels now, uh, one focusing mm -hmm. on yacht walkthroughs called Naughty Styles. And another one is focusing on our new, new build. still haul explore yacht build. Um, called naughty guys and a uti that is um yeah so we've uh we've come a long way in the past eight years of our yacht life yeah and like quickly i mean we we have owned boats now for eight years eight years yeah eight years um i also own a marine business um it's a dealership i mean it's multiple layers to the business but one part is a dealership we are um, um a tender dealer yamaha outboard dealer e-proportion electric motor dealer and um and then on the bigger boats we do yacht maintenance yacht management and i used to captain more and uh, crew more but uh, now like with the busy schedule that kind of um is a little less now with the captaining <laughs> so we're kind of uh you know talking to the new yachtsman today and how did you get started and what did you find kind of helped you the most get into this so when we started in this i mean when we met actually <laughs> um Rico told me that he is he would like to live on a boat, which I was like, well, that's interesting. I would be interested in that. And then um, I was like, well, show me what you're talking about. And we, you know, he took me on board of like one sailboat, not going to mention any names. And when we went on board, it was an older sailboat. And I was like, uh, you sure about this? And he was like, yeah, actually kind of not sure now. <laughs> <laughs> so and I said, well, you might want to like join a sailing club and actually get your say certification and like, you know, just have an idea so we can charter different boats and just figure out what we like. Yep. And that's exactly what was he a pretty did. good advice back then. <laughs> I would have bought something I would have not bought two years later. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> what I knew back then. <laughs> so he got ASA certified and um got in the sailing club. Um and we started chartering. We mm -hmm. chartered a whole bunch of different sailboats, all sorts of sizes with our friends. And it was a really, that was a great, you know, monohauls, multi-hauls. Like great way to get into it and just figure out, you know, what was what was interesting to us. And um, that just started this whole journey as we realized like, wow, this is, uh, there's a lot more to it than you initially think. Yeah. So that was how we got into it. And then once we wanted to actually buy a boat, that was a whole other journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that also made us understand that we really like being out on the water. And we were thinking, okay, how can we maybe even make money being on the water? And we um gotten into like when we, we're in California and LA and um have like a huge dolphin population or one of the largest dolphin dolphin populations in the world, kind of on the Southern California West Coast. Um, plus a whole bunch of different whales all year round um so we said you know like let's let's take people out let's take people out dolphin watching whale watching and we were starting looking at a center console uh to do it like started a six, very like small a six pack. <laughs> and <laughs> ended up with a um 47 foot boat so um, so i think the key is like you know um if you are not 100 percent sure where you're going to be ending up um the, the easiest probably would be to go to local boat shows so you can go on a whole bunch of different boats and really like get a feel like what what do you like what do you don't like like what feels big what doesn't feel big because on picture or in a video it's sometimes hard to judge you know is it something you know, i feel comfortable in is it too small is it too big um and and yeah i think that that helped a lot we went on a whole bunch of different boats and that shaped our decision in the end yeah, I found that, um, you know, it's it's easy to find uh, sailboats for charter in the Caribbean and Bahamas and stuff. It's kind of tough for the new yachtsmen to understand what like owning a motor yacht is because it's a little more difficult yeah. to find a $2 million motor yacht to go rent for the weekend. <laughs> um, so I think maybe your walkthroughs would help there because I think the um, it's really, really hard to find a nice new late model boat that's not in a charter fleet that's 20 years old and rough. Have you found that on the West Coast as well? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, West Coast yacht charters are definitely um, even more difficult. I, than, I'd say than East Coast, yeah, I or guess, Caribbean. Yeah, Florida would be, you know, would be a better spot, I think. But yeah, for over here, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, difficult. And we are actually, the new yacht we're building is going to be, um, we were going to do an owner operator part time charter. So we totally get what you're saying. Um, it is. It was part of the reason why we decided to do it because it's very, very difficult um, to find something like that. Um, I think with in in, Cal in California, if you are looking for um, for a yacht, the best way to um, to go about it is really the boat shows mm -hmm. and finding yourself a broker that would uh, understand what your needs are and get you in as many boats as possible. We try to. Um, do our walkthroughs in the way that uh, people can have a really good idea of what's out there. So we do a lot of different boats uh, from all sorts of different backgrounds. And just to kind of give you a rounding understanding of like, okay, which direction do I want to go? But once you kind of have an idea, the best way to do it, to just really start looking at boats, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, and I think that the, um, you know, where you're going to go boating kind of drives what boat it is too. I know that you guys awesome. have very different requirements out there on the West Coast. You've got big oceans with big waves and you've got big logs and, you know, going fast is not important at all. Whereas, you know, my Bahamas customers, you know, they want to go from Miami to Bimini as fast as they can and check in, check into the marina and, you know, be able to go for a four day trip. So um, I really think yeah. that the environment, you know, your goal or your destination is really important. Um, well, we can relate the... because we just moved, uh, basically moved to the to Miami from LA as yeah. we now officially sold our boat two days ago. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is part of the reason why, because the Caribbean is so close and Exumas is our favorite place in the world. Even though our boat will be full displacement, so our top speed is going to be 11 knots and our cruising is nine. So we, we're going to take it slow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think yeah, slow is fine as long as you have the time. I find yeah, when I'm talking yeah. to some of these new yachtsmen, you know, they're coming out of a, you know, they're executives in a fast paced world and they've got a fast sports car and they may even have an airplane and, you know, to tell them they're going to sit in front of the window at seven knots, is not going to work out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, everyone's different and there's a boat out there for everybody. That's what we always say. It's all about the application, how you're going to use it. hundred percent agree. Yeah. Yeah. And what about the long, long distance passage making? I, I find that a lot of people dream of doing that, but not many people really enjoy it. Have you done a lot of long trips? I mean, I Re have. Rico has done um, definitely more than I have. We actually are probably one of the very few channels, um, you know, in a nautical niche, like say compared to like, you know, other sailing channels that are, have an interest to really cruise the world. Like we never really, came into it that way we really um were interested in living on a boat and being able to you know to go places but not really like circumnavigating was never really a goal with the yacht we're building now we are starting to consider because <laughs> it's still not circumnavigate but not really circumnavigate yeah so i think uh we, we at least we'll have the tool to to do it we could go i mean if i wanted to do the pacific north Pass passage one year uh, that would be probably a good boat to do it with um but in the in the meantime i agree with you like uh, a lot of people have this romantic idea of like oh i'm gonna sail around the world oh i'm gonna go in the south pacific and oh i'm gonna go back and forth and, every year and they're they're, they're they're prepping the boat for like five years and <laughs> the boat will never leave the marina where i'm kind of like okay you know maybe not that realistic um you should have maybe just gotten something to have fun close by and you would have actually used the boats i do a lot of boating and I did a trip eight days, eight nights, no land. And mm -hmm. by, by day three, I was done. Was like, <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, I just, four, four days at sea without seeing anything. I, I was really surprised when I got, you know, 150 miles offshore at how little life there was. You know, oh, yeah. so used to coastal cruising and you get way out in the ocean and there's not a stick or a bird or a bait fish. I mean, we're in the Puerto Rican trench for a day and a half. And I swear I didn't see a living thing for two days. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't even feel like you're moving. That's um, crazy. But, you know, though. I do get it that people want to be able to get to, you know, the only way to get to Bora Bora by boat is by boat, right? I mean, you got you to gotta pay your dues to, to make the voyage so that you can enjoy being in Bora Bora for three weeks. 
Um, so I get why people do it, but I'm surprised when I talk to the new yachtsmen. I think they watch some of these, you know, half hour videos on YouTube about crossing the Azores and you can't in a half hour video get a feel for what it's like to stare at the, <laughs> out the same window for 14 days. But yeah. I think it also more so it's not the actual crossing itself. It's what goes into it to prep the boat for such a journey and what goes into it after the fact, after the boat makes such a journey and what you all need to do to, to, to service and maintenance and make sure that the boat is good afterwards um, and how much money is involved. I think a lot of people have this romantic idea. And the first thing when people look at our walkthroughs and sometimes, um, you know, we have a spec sheet in every single video, oh, yeah. uh, which usually is confirmed by, you know, it has to be confirmed by either a broker if it's a used boat or um, the yacht manufacturer. And sometimes we don't get the range, um, you know, given to us. And I, I mean, we can sometimes calculate it, but I just, you know, don't like to do that unless it was confirmed. So uh, sometimes the range is not included and people get really upset when they're like, what's the range on this boat? And, you know, let's say it's, I don't know. Give, give an it's example. Just a, well, regular motor yacht. Yeah, yeah fly just, bridge motor just yacht. A, like a, a where you kind of like it's like, like it, it, it doesn't. Yeah, matter. It's like, <laughs> I found you know I run a lot of motor yachts and I I find that the stated range is a speed you never run. You know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. If, but you, if you if you run this five million dollar yacht at seven knots, you can cross the ocean. But you didn't buy this five million dollar yacht to go seven knots, did you? You bought mm -hmm. it to do twenty mm -hmm. knots. And at 20 knots, the range is one fifth of that number. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Or people go like, oh my gosh, but the range is only, it's only 500 nautical miles. I'm like, well, that's like, a good range for you, especially if you're starting out. <laughs> if you think yeah. you're going to be crossing ocean back, back and forth, it's not just about fuel. It's a lot of money involved in prepping the boat and dealing with everything that comes afterwards. I think that's something that people um, don't really understand. That's definitely a romantic idea. Oh, oh yeah. Agree. Yeah. Yeah, I see even people with 120 footers shipping their boat to Europe mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. if you do the crossing, um, the first place you go is a boat yard. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And if exactly. you wanna, if you wanna fly in and start using your boat, if you have a, a you know crew bringing it across, it doesn't mean that you arrive there. Everything is going to be working no, it's, and it's, for you to enjoy the. It's boat. hard on the material too. I yeah. mean, it's uh, it's a lot of hours on the engines, generators, everything. So I get the, the, these guys that are getting into yachting for the first time and you know they're they're not 20 right they're they're older and advice wise I, I get a lot of people that say start with sailing but I don't really think you need to start out sailing this day and age what are your thoughts on that well I think um, it's the easiest way to start um because as you said there's it's not so easy to charter um bare boat power yachts and a lot of different areas um seems like the sailing clubs are just a kind of an easy and um, entry point um if you have a way of starting you know in the power yacht you know bareboat charter great but i feel like that's not as well, um, I, as available i i kind of i kind of have a little different take on it um i mean first of all like every time i've transferred a sailing boat or we've chartered sailing vessels um, a lot of time you end up motor sailing or motoring just because you're on a schedule and, um, you know, you're, you're just trying to go from point A to point B and the, the weather conditions are not perfect for that journey, for example. Um, another thing is what I've noticed with cl clients of mine, which were really into sailing, had big sailing boats. I mean, they're talking like, you know, 80, 90 foot monohulls. Um, as they were getting, you know, a little up in age, their mobility wasn't as much anymore as great anymore than like it was when they bought the boat and um so i i would say like if you have like to your question it's like what you would you say people should start with sailing and then move over to power at some point i said i would say like, i think there's nothing there's no negative aspect to starting with power if you just don't like the sailing it's more work it's more stuff it's more liability it's it's a whole different boat like usually less space for the length of the of the hall, um, less volume. Um, I, mean, I, I could go on and, on and on. The sailing has a whole nother aspect of learning that, yes. you know, just makes that yes. learning curve so much steeper. I agree. I agree. Does it hurt if you start sailing and then move to power? Absolutely not, because you you still learn stuff which you can apply in the powerboard world too when you're docking and 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 so on. I mean. 
I always tell like when I when I teach clients, um, I always tell them, it's like, look at the sailboat's mast on top. There's your wind indicator. You know where the wind is coming from um, as a little help if you don't have a wind instrument on the power boat on the smaller ones. Um, so, but yeah. Is the, is the question, um, just so I, I understand, is the question when you say start, like buy your first boat sailboat or just try to get experience? Just to get experience. I, I've got a lot of people that I'm finding want to get into this for the first time. And um, so much of the media out there is about sailing and worldwide cruising. And there just isn't much on the guy that just wants to buy a yacht in Miami and go to Bimini. So true. So it is true. definitely true. But I do think <clears throat> by getting, getting your sailing um, starting how you started with sailing, even though we totally ended up in primarily power, I mean, still do some sailing and, but I think you're a better, you're a better captain because of it. You have a lot more understanding of the wind, a much better understanding of the wind, which is still really important on the power vessel as well, as well when you're docking. And you know, I think you're a better captain for it. So yeah. if, uh, if you have no way of just jumping into a, a buying a yacht and you know, you're still, you know, a year or two away from that and you want to get a lot of, you know, good experience operating, I think getting, doing some sailing is is a, is a good thing yeah no doubt that uh if you can dock a 60 foot sailboat with no bow thruster and a single engine you can dock anything agreed <laughs> it, yeah um, it definitely helps a little <laughs> let me back you up a little bit tell me about your first kind of couple months aboard a yacht after living on land your whole life what, <laughs> what what's that like um it's interesting because when we started um this journey i you know i kind of said like I can do this for like a couple of years and fast forward eight years <laughs> and I have zero interest in living in a house at this point, like really, truly enjoy Me living neither. on the boat. I think it's, it's a question is what kind of boat? So when people have these, I, I met people along the way, they um, got inspired by, let's say YouTube channels, TV, TV shows, whatever it might've been friends um and they're just like oh i want to live on the boat and then they're looking at their budget and see what they can get and then they end up let's say with a 40 foot monohull sailboat and the couple moves onto the boat and fairly quickly they realize this is really little space like it's um you don't you don't below you're not having this beautiful views because it's you know it's a monohull sailboat and um so I think it really depends like what kind of choice you're making if you want to live on a on a um on a boat. And obviously, what's your plan? Like, is it more like a condo on the water? So it's gonna sit in the marina most of the time, or do you really think like, okay, I'm gonna do you know a thousand miles there, five hundred miles there? Like then then that might change a little bit. But I uh, um we have not regret it at all. No, I think we've made a, a right decision with the with the yacht that we bought. Uh, because we have a lot of space, you know, we do feel like we're, you know, it does feel like a yacht, not like a boat. Um, you know, you just, you feel, you don't feel like you majorly downgraded. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, but we do know quite a few couples that tried this, bought the wrong boat, uh, had a bad experience and, and left it, and left the whole idea. Usually it's, you know, it's it, usually one person's happy, the other one's not. <laughs> and so the other person who's not happy said, I will never do this again. And it just kind of ruined the whole experience. I think it's really important to to do your due diligence and research before you pull the trigger and move, move aboard because it might be you know it's, it might be your uh, last time. It actually will be your last time you move on board because e either you're going to live on board for a long time, or you will never do it again. <laughs> so that's kind of your your only chance to do this right the first time. Yeah, I've seen a lot of guys um, end their yachting career by taking their wife out. On the day they shouldn't have left the dock. <laughs> exactly. Rico says this all the time. I, it's amazing it's like, how four hours can change the rest of your life. You are so, he was so correct. Just I giving just this had advice this conversation, to somebody. Um, who is like really excited and uh, he's looking for a quite big boat and for to, you know, he's for got the, a good budget. He has a really good budget and for the whole family. And uh, he said, and so I, I said, like, okay, what no matter what you do, just pick the calmest day for the first time when you take the family out. You don't want everybody to get seasick and nobody wants to ever come back to the boat. Um, and I think that is like 
Yeah, hundred percent. Well, Nail on the head. You go out five times, you have a great time, and then you have a once, you know, kind of a not such such a good day. You kind of go, okay, yeah, yeah, but like it's just happened. But if your first time is bad, yeah. it just leaves a you know a, a, a bad taste in your mouth. You never want to do and it. Especially again. guys. I mean, you know, like it's your new toy. You want to use it immediately, and you don't care. Oh, thirty nuts. Who cares? Like, let's just take the boat out for an hour. And it's like, okay, that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of couples I find that are successful at it, they don't have the same goal. So the guy has his brother yeah. come with him and he hires a local kid to help him. And, you know, the three guys run the boat a thousand miles to get it up to Nantucket. And, um, you know, the kid flies home, the brother flies home, the wife flies in, the, mm -hmm. the grandbabies fly in and they putz around in the boat for three weeks and everybody has a great time. I just think the key is that not everyone has to be on the journey because that's not what yachting is all about. It's, you know, the yacht is the destination as well as the journey and not everyone has to go on every journey. I know my I wife gets seasick and I know to leave her at the dock if it's not great. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I, I couldn't agree more. And you guys are going to do some charter stuff too when you get your new boat built? Yeah. Take mm -hmm. people that's out. The plan. That'll be great. That's, that's, that's the plan. We're so. going to, we're going to start in the Bahamas. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like week long uh exuma strips? Yep. Mm -hmm. That that is that was kind of like the plan for now, um, at least for the first season. And then we we've we'll, been we'll... doing that for for gosh, the last oh. five years. Yeah. Um, just a few trips a year, um, you know, with uh with a like bare boat charter boat, and then we basically put together a charter. Mm -hmm. So we have a good amount of experience with it and we enjoy it. It's a lot of work, but we do like it. And uh yeah, we definitely um a part of the reason that we went for such a large large vessel we don't really need such a big boat for the two of us no. uh, was because we wanted to to be able to to do the charters right well that's great i think that's all been really helpful and uh, awesome tell us about your youtube channels again uh, so our walkthrough youtube channel called naughty styles and it's n-a-u-t-i styles and our new channel where you could follow our journey of building our explore yacht is called naughty guys and it's n-a-u-t-i guys mm -hmm. and there we're going to go more in detail and dive into the whole build process and our decisions and why we make the decisions or why we're making the decisions yeah well i'd love to check back in on you guys on the new construction maybe six months or a year when yeah it's, yeah sounds, when it's not good. all flat on the floor yeah yeah yeah, yeah it sounds good would love that thanks for having same us. here <laughs> i'd like to see it going up as well <laughs> Well, thank you very much. And uh, everyone out there, please like and subscribe if you found this interesting. Thank, thank you, you so guys. much for having us. All right. See you later.